Hey campers, George here, <laughs> back in the man cave, looking at a new gizmo, or gizmos actually, that I just got in the mail, well a couple of days ago, and uh, finally got a chance to uh, sit down and have a look at them, and it is these guys right here, and it is the, the Baco uh, combination, uh, lap knife and saw, been around a while this combination I believe, Having never owned either either one uh, uh, a Boko or a uh, a Mora knife, I thought it would be a, a, a good perfect time. time to check them out both. Uh, I'd heard a lot about the saw, and you know everybody knows about the knives. Um, it is based on the Mora knife, and I I believe it might even be a Mora knife, and it's called the Laplander. And the same with the saw, you can see here they call it a, a Laplander, and they also have Laplander on the the knife sheath. It is a combination uh, price-wise. Couldn't turn it down. You can't beat getting a, uh, a saw like this and a knife like this for 15 bucks each. Um, so I wanted to have a look at it. I got it and now I'm having a look at it and I'm sharing it with you. <laughs> it comes in this package uh, which is becoming a, a fairly typical way to package items now. Less expensive I assume. Has the cardboard backing mounted on the cardboard has all the general information on it. Baco, you can see the label there. In the back it gives a, a measurement length of each one. So what I want to do is have a quick look at it and then run outside all enthusiastic, give them a try and see how well they work. Always been interested in the saw though. I do have a steel PS10 saw that I've always used when I go camping and it's been pretty good. I've been happy with it. But I've heard so much about this guy to be honest, I thought they'd be more expensive. Shock and horror, they weren't. Have to give it a try, so let's have a look at it. So let me just uh, get it out of here, cut these ties off and get it off. Have a look, see. There you can see the knife. A quick look at the saw. Oh, the saw. And you can see it there. And the knife. And then there. A plastic sheath I'm not sure what it's made of we'll find out I'm sure and then the saw now the first thing I want to look at is the saw because that was my real reason for getting this combo this was just an added extra uh, looks looks fine I don't know what's at about nine inches right let's have a look see uh, you can see there when it's closed it's exactly nine inches actually here you have uh, the press button to release it and it even says press <laughs> isn't that convenient press it opens up locks in automatically it's pretty solid lock and here you can see the saw on the blade design and quality Baco made in Sweden a high quality steel and it's the Laplander that is a pretty sturdy blade just looking at it right off the bat, I can tell you'll be able to get replacement blades. It's just a screw holding it in there. I'm sure that just comes out and you can replace the blade. The handle is uh, almost like a hard rubber. Uh, it's a nice grip, actually. Your hand's not going to slip on there easy. Very basic pattern on it, just to for grip. Nice size. Uh, it's not too heavy. It's, it's pretty light, actually. I'm surprised how light this is. It does have a lanyard on you. It is a leather lanyard. And they just did a nasty little granny knot there. In fact, I might just change this to some Bright 550. Because this is green and dark, I'm going to drop it. And my eyesight is not what it used to be. And I will lose it. This stuff on it. it look, It locks in nicely. Let's put it back. Oh, what's the length? Open the length about 16 inches, uh, the full length. The blade open, well, let's look at the cutting edge of the blade. Seven, just under seven and a half inches. Look at the very tip of that blade. Let's see if I can get it there for you. Uh, there, can you see that little itty bitchy piece there? I wonder if that's meant to be there or that's just where the 
the blade got cut. So to close it, you press it again and close it. I know all you guys are familiar with this. For me, I'm learning. And it stays in there, it does lock in there, which is a good thing. I'm not sure how the locking mechanism works. I'm not about to take it apart and have a look, but it seems to be pretty sturdy. It does take a, a good solid press to release it, so it's not going to accidentally release it. And we'll give it a test run, probably cut up a couple of pieces of wood, different sizes. I don't know how big I want to go. Seven and a half inch blade is pretty healthy and it's all the way across. One thing I do like about this, it cuts both ways. My PS10 was a pull cut. Be interesting to see how well it cuts. The knife on the back here, it says it's the 2444 lap bulk. It has this uh, sheath on it. There you can see the knife. The total length of the knife. Quick look, see. Nine inches. Isn't that convenient? Well, not quite. It's actually eight and a half inches. The blade is about three and three quarter inches long. Oh, it's sharp. <laughs> yeah, that is sharp. For a Mora knife, it is a Scandi grind. Stainless steel, I assume. Yep, stainless steel. Made in Sweden. Boko. Boko, whatever the names. And it has the black handle with the green trim front and back the handle is that is rubberized it's actually a pretty good rubber you, you you're not going to slip on that i know that these are very popular a lot of people are using these and like i said 15 dollars and for the reputation it has it's a pretty good a pretty good price and it's as far as i'm concerned it's a it's a bargain it came sharp that's two knives in a row I've bought that have come really sharp. I'm impressed. Things are looking up. The mora and the sheath. I'm not sure about the sheath. Uh, let's see if we can find out what the sheath is made of. No, nope, all I can find out is it just says it's a it's just plastic, I, I would assume. And of course, it has a belt clip. Not really impressed with that. It does have that style of clip on, so... I assume there's a reason for that. Uh, I've never seen um, a button style clip on like that. Does not go in, it goes in secure. It's not going anywhere. It doesn't really rattle either, which is a good thing. So the Bucko Laplander knife, uh, Scandi grind, nice. Actually, you know, I have bought Mora before. I think I bought them for my daughters. I bought two for my daughters, and one thing that disappointed me, yeah, this edge here, I'm looking at that, and, you know, it has that slight downward motion there. If that tip came up, it would almost be a, a saber style. This top edge here is rounded, so that's going to be a problem striking right off the bat. I don't think that's going to strike a, a ferro rod. Is that a problem? No. So far, so good. Maybe it's time to give him a test. Let's head out to the South 40 and do some playing. I need to, do, to cut a piece of wood for my uh, uh, big stick number four. I will need to cut up the uh, bass wood that I got from a friend. Just cut it down to size so I can start carving the head. So here we are in the South 40 by the fireplace and I've got some bits of wood here that we can chop and saw up and all that good stuff. But if you like me and you like to wear cargo pants when you're outdoors, you got the big cargo pockets. I will say this fit in the pocket with this. So it does fit. It's not too big for that sort of thing. And you can see here I uh, put on my bright. 550 so I won't lose it just used a fisherman's knife so let's see what we can cut up here and uh, I'm not going to blanch it in this even lightly I'm not a big fan of doing that with a smaller knife and that's why I own this guy it's as tough as nails let's find some wood as always people 
when playing with sharp shiny objects gloves always recommend that safety first so keep that in mind found me three pieces of wood kind of different sizes kind of different pieces of wood let's see how we do we'll start with this guy and saw him up a little bit so we start with this guy about an inch let's see how we do remember don't use yourself as a stop if your blade slides through so remember this thing cuts both ways so that means as soon as you get a, a start on it wow I'm not putting any pressure on this at all and it's in already look at that wow okay <laughs> Good start right there. Let's do it again. I can't believe that. So you want to get it. I mean, I'm literally not even putting any pressure on it. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Let's go with something a little thicker. This is, I don't know how good this wood is, but it's a little bit thicker about, it's over an inch thick, so it's thicker than the last one. Let's give that a go see how we do right through no problem I'm liking this let's try this guy a little bit thicker a little bit closer to about two inches would I be cutting thicker than this probably not likely maybe so you know if I'm building a shelter or something this is about probably about the thickness I'm gonna be working on so let's give it a try it's gonna get a good grip on the wood I'm putting no pressure on this saw at all. Very little pressure right through. Look at that. Beautiful clean cut. Okay guys, I gotta tell you, I'm impressed. I had to put no pressure on it. I could use the whole length of the blade. It cuts through that stuff like butter. I think I like the idea of uh, forward and back cutting. Makes a big difference. Now I know why everybody's after these things. So we've got the knife now, and what I want to do with this guy is I'm just going to play with it and see how well it cuts and that sort of thing for what I typically use something like this for. So let's do that. One thing I did notice, this is a thick blade and it takes quite a lot to bend it, which is another good thing. Let's have a look at this piece of wood and this knife. So the first thing I want to do is just slice, oh, wow, slice into it. Okay. Look at that. No problem there. Let me trim this down and let's see if we can feather it. Let's see if we can feather with it. Okay. No problem there. I like this idea as a bush knife and I can see why people are using these as bushcraft knives you know as good a quality as it is and how well it works for 15 bucks you're starting if you're a starter you're starting with a good knife let's see if I can make a notch that's not a very good piece of wood let's see if I can make a quick seven notch here 
Yeah, do I want to? I hate doing this with a small knife, but let's see how well it does. Yeah, it went in there, no problem. So, I mean, light battering with it, you know, to batten. Some knives are just made for it, some not. I'm sure this one would handle it, just not heavily. Yeah, this can make a notch, no problem. Look at that. Slices in there nicely. Obviously the Scandi grind is the way to go. There you go. How strong is the tip? You know, the, the width of the blade is not bad and that tip is not very long, the tip piece, which means it should be strong. Let's see. Dug right in there. Yeah. Let's clean it up so you can see the hole. You can see there. Made a hole in the notch. Nice. Well, I gotta say, I can't complain about that. Two nice tools to have. And it comes in a combo, and for about 30 bucks, it's a pretty good deal. Like I said, I wanted to do something for my big stick number four my bushcraft hiking pole that I'm making and what I want to do is I'm making a head for it that's going to go on the top of the pole but it's going to be made of different wood a friend of mine gave me some basswood told me that for carving basswood is probably your best option unfortunately the piece he gave me he gave me two pieces a small piece and a big piece a small piece is just a little bit too small for here the big piece is a big piece so I'm going to cut a piece of the uh, the big one off so a little bit bigger than here so that I can mount it on here and trim it down after I've done the head on it so let's go try that out so here's the small piece of basswood unfortunately it's a little bit thin and here is the bigger piece so let's go play with that like I said what I want to do is cut a piece off here and looking at it and it's got a crack there but I'm looking at a piece maybe down there uh, about that long how to do it I think if I saw into here and then batten down with my uh, Knives of Alaska, maybe that'll maybe that'll work. Let's and one thing about basswood, if you look right now, you can see how long the grain is on this. And it's very soft. Well not very soft, but it's perfect for carving. So cut it like this. So all I want to do is just cut in about halfway down here. I think I can cut right through this thing with this saw. Wow, I think I'm going to do that. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, I know it's basswood, but still, look at the size of that log. I'm going to 
don't have a long enough edge here. Huh. What to do? I see a solution. So I think what I'm going to do is bring out my big gun, my trail bar, so... Let's see what we can do. And there you go. Got it. So that worked. <laughs> It'll work where I got to attach this to that and carve the head in. This is all about this guy and this guy. Impressed with both. This surprised me probably more than this. I've heard so much about these and how well they work. I wasn't really surprised how well it worked. This I was never convinced until I used it now and I just did some feathering and basic work with it. It's impressive. It's sharp, it's nice, it's clean and it priced right. Well for $30 you can't beat that combination and it's a great combo. I'm impressed. Now I know why everybody has them. What can I say? Like, share, subscribe. You know the story. Pretty sure I'll be back again. Probably working on the Big Stick 4. I gotta get that thing done. And I have a couple of other projects I wanna do. Who knows? I don't, but I will be back. Just saying. Thanks for watching.